Morning, everybody. My sister and I have been um, forging around the farm. Well, she's been forging more than I have, but she's making some art for gifts. So I'm going to let her explain it. Good morning, beautiful people. Uh, to, uh, the other day, I went out and found a couple pieces of barn board, and I just took them to the cut saw and bucked them up in random pieces. I was looking for, like, rustic nail holes and not to be perfectly straight, and then I gathered up a bunch of rusty things. And I was showing my art out of just some rust and barn board. If you play around a bit, I have a pretty big collection of rust behind me here so I could play around. But this particular, this is a little cow. See, he's kind of looking like a cow. And the word love, you could do any kind of words you want. These aren't uh, pegged down yet. We, you can use a silicone glue with these or you can use a little small staple, depending how you want to apply them. You could also drill holes and put wire through the board and tie them on if they get heavy, like a heavy piece like this would need wire to help hold it on. This looks like a little brownstone apartment and all it is is horse buckles off of old uh, horse gear. And then this piece is really uh, different. Um, I collect keys for years and years and years. I, this has some of my old homestead keys, my husband's work keys, the key to one of our doors in our old house. And I made this for my husband for his birthday. And it's called the keys to my heart. Cause you gotta have a lot of keys to get into this heart. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I've, uh, I've, uh, and women are complicated, they always say, because you don't have all the keys. <laughs> anyway, my sister brings me this piece, and it's just so darling because I'm on Heart River, and I collect hearts as well, and it has a little key on it, so it made center. There you go. That's what you can do with a bit of wood and rust. And this is my favorite, the brownstone in New York. I'm actually loving the cow, too. I think it's really cute. My girlfriend Judy is going to die when she sees these because this is totally her jam. But I'm liking it myself. What is this one, Laura? It's a flower. A it's flower. like a flower. Okay. And these are like tulips. Out of old rusty nails. Okay, and we got one more thing to show you real quick that we've been trying to create for her home. Okay, this is all the stuff we found around the farm. So there's millions of pieces more. But this is just a start. And we're going to make a little bit of art for her living room. In my pick shed at our local transfer station, I found these frames and uh, I tore them apart. They had some little painted flowers in them, all print copy from wherever in the world. And so I, I took these, these are like a foam board that were in them, and I applied this. Uh, Listen burlap. to the cows. <laughs> the cows are moving in the back. I glued some burlap to the pieces, just like this. So I just had a roll of this type of burlap. It's a her girlfriend gave it to her. From a reuse center. And uh, then I, I, I just put the frames on them here. And I'm using my rust again because I have it. <laughs> Use what you have. So that here, I'll just give you the concept. You can take it wherever you want with your stuff. So there's the frames. And then sometimes simple is a statement and it's better than too much and other times like i'm a mosaic artist so sometimes i really fill things up but this is a statement for this old homestead it was a horse and sled ride type farm and they had horse and horse drawn uh, equipment these? on this farm so these are off the the gears and the rigging that would have buckled up the horse and that's my statement piece with just a few Isn't pieces it beautiful? of brass or copper. I'm going to hang this up in Judy's house. <laughs> well, just what you can create with just a few pieces of rust and some burlap and give it a rugged look. Keep it simple sometimes. It's going to look beautiful when it's all installed and the installation's done. But she needed a piece of art behind her couch, and I think this is the one. And it's totally, everything was free. 100% free. That's the best part. Design on a dime. Well, today we're going to teach you how to make uh, pumpkin puree from scratch for making pumpkin pies. And I'm going to ask you to quit wasting those pumpkins after Halloween. Either find a farm and donate them to them or do this. Cook that pumpkin down and freeze it and use it for pies and cakes and cookies. Because there's too much waste in this world. So you just cut your big pumpkin in half. I actually got these pumpkins for a dollar each after Halloween. I asked the grocer and he said... 
I go, what do you got? You got pumpkins left? He goes, I do. I said, what do you want a pound? He looks at me, he goes, how many do you want? I said, five. And he said, a dollar. I said, I'll, yay. So for a dollar, I'll be able to get quite a few pies or cakes out of this. Just split your pumpkin. Oh, I should have took the, the core off. I might need to bang on the hammer. I'm older now. I don't have my strength I used to. So it's a nice steel spoon with a good edge. And you just scrape out your guts. It's way easier to do than when you're making a jack-o'-lantern. Because you have half a pumpkin. And we won't be wasting these seeds either. These seeds will get washed off, soaked in salt water. And then you drain them and you put them in the oven at a low heat, like 200, for about an hour. And you just toast them. If you have a wood stove, you can just put them on a cookie sheet and put them on the top of the wood stove. And stir them once in a while and have a yummy yummy treat and also good for your birds and animals to eat they are a natural dewormer so there's the pumpkin guts and all you set your oven at 350 and it's going to take about an hour to bake this up and sometimes though when they're thick like this it could take an hour 20 minutes so you just get your pumpkin gutted and you take a piece of tin foil or a metal lid if you have one that fits the pumpkin. Just helps it cook better, softer. And you put it on like that. And you put them on your cookie sheet at a 350 oven, an hour, hour 20. And we'll come back and tell you how to finish it. Trying to get the seeds out. So you just take the pulp and mash and squish it. And the seeds start popping out. I'll leave a few in because this, this will be fed to my chickens. Then you just take the other half there. One thing inside the bowl. There's the seeds down in there. You just, just a little squish game for a minute to get them to slip out of the thing. You don't have to hand pick them out or anything. And then you're going to rinse them. And you're going to put about two tablespoons of salt in your pot with some water. And uh, bring that... Bring the salt water to a boil, seeds, just to a boil. Mm -hmm. And if the chickens get this part. I'll leave the chickens a few seeds as well because they're good to deworm. And I'm going to make uh, lemon garlic pasta with chicken parmigiana, roses style. I don't need to show you all that because we've got a whole video on it, but I'm going to copy Rose's recipe because it was lovely. Thank you, Rose. Gary's mother's recipe here for pumpkin pie. Um, I'm going to get my sister to read it while I show you everything here so it's just easier for me to tape. So you need two cups of pumpkin puree, one, can, one cup of canned milk. It's really important that it's canned milk. You can use um, whipping cream or cream too, but canned milk makes this recipe. Four fresh eggs. You need uh, one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of ginger, and a pinch of cloves. Or you can just have a tablespoon and a half of allspice, which has all those ingredients in it. Then another thing that's so important is real vanilla. Well, when the pumpkin puree is ready, and you pop that in the oven and your pie shell. We made these the other day, as you saw. Have a hot oven already pre preheated at 450. You bake for 15 minutes, then leave it in the oven for another three quarters of an hour at 350. Really cold to serve it with ice cream. Yum. Sounds yummy. Well, pumpkin's almost done, ready to come out. She just took the foil off. Looking yummy. You can really smell it too. Just waiting for it to cool down and we're going to make pie. So here we have one of the half scooped out. And look at that puree just scoops out of there like nothing. Like butter. And I'll show you how to blend it up and bake, bag it up for the freezer and make a pie with it. Can't wait. Guess what I'm eating. So here I'm using one of my favorite tools to get this more pureed. But if you don't have one of these, you can totally do this in the blender in bits, like a few cups at a time. Or you can do it with a potato masher and use that old elbow grease. So here, well, here we have the pumpkin pureed down. I have two and a half cups in here for the pie. And this is how I store it in the freezer. I put it in Ziploc bags and I flatten it like this and it takes up way less storage space. There's enough in here for the recipe I have for pie. But can they also use it for cakes and stuff? So off to the freezer these go and we'll make pie.
We have two and a half cups of pumpkin in here. And we're putting one cup of brown sugar and one cup of canned milk, which I need to open better. So in the meantime, four eggs. It's really nice if they can be fresh farm eggs. Oh. Not everybody's that spoiled. I know I'm spoiled. You need one teaspoon of vanilla. All this is in the same bowl. It's easy peasy once you got your pumpkin puree. So we're adding, the biggest thing with pumpkin pie is not too much sugar and don't overdo the spices. You wanna taste the pumpkin. So this is one teaspoon of cinnamon. Freshly cut. Teaspoon of cloves. I have a nice little nutmeg grater here, and so I've already pre-made a half a teaspoon of nutmeg and a half a teaspoon of ginger. And I should use my spoon, but I'm old school. I'm going to use a teaspoon of salt, and it's in my hand. And those are the ingredients. Now I'm going to blend that up and put it in the pie. Oh, okay, she's just blending it up, and then we're going to pour it into her homemade pie shell. Okay, it's all blended up. Sure we're and this to get the dishes done. Sorry, it's all blended up and ready to go into. And it looks really loose, but that's normal. It's gonna set the eggs and the sugar will help set it. So you're gonna pour it into your pie shells. Okay, so she poured two pies out of that. And then she's gonna decorate the top with her pretty 450 leaves. 450 oven, and I'm gonna set them in the oven and then put my leaves on, because otherwise you can sink them set this part's a little delicate and I just drop them on these so they don't sink and sometimes they do and sometimes they work out perfect the other pie is gonna have to get the hearts on okay you can't see it very well but we'll show you when it comes out kind of plop them well the pies are out of the oven and it looks all pretty princess she put a little cow on the table i love it he's cute too She's outside working with her husband right now. They're just uh, putting the camper away for the winter. They it just winter caught them before they got it done. They're all good though. They're almost done. And I just wanted to say I love this baker's table. Isn't it cute? I am closing and loves from Heart River and from the Ice Queen sisters. Can't wait to have this for dessert. I'm making some Parmesan chicken, Rose's recipe and some lemon pasta. See you on the next video. Ciao, everybody. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell.